everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Hey everybody, it's Joe. I'm back out at Giga Texas on what is hard to believe, but the last Friday of October 2024. And there is a lot of great news uh, that has come out about Tesla and will affect Giga Texas, uh, uh, mostly from that third quarter financial results meeting that was held here on Wednesday. I'd like to go over a couple of those uh, here today as we look into the future of what to expect at Giga Texas. Now, first of all, Tesla has reiterated that they are on their way to producing at least two more uh, lower cost vehicles based on the Model 3 and Model Y and also using the production lines that exist here at Giga Texas and also other factories that Tesla has around the world. And this is going to be sometime in the first half of 2025, which is really great to see and to get confirmation of. Another thing that they did talk about is that the robo taxi that was uh, unveiled at the We Robot event on the 10th of October is going to be starting up production in 2025 and hitting volume production uh, in uh, 2026 with about 2 million projected for that year, which is really impressive. Now, as I have talked about before, one of the things that I like to look at is the deliveries and the equipment that is being stockpiled around Giga Texas to kind of get an insight of what's going on. Now with that information that we got from Tesla and all of these things that I have been showing you, like for example, the steel that is being stored on the west side, some of that uh, new equipment that just started being uh, unwrapped on my previous video over on that west material staging yard, a lot of the transformers that are being installed, of course, uh, up at the electrical switch yard, getting ready to increase the power delivery for Giga Texas. And in addition to that, uh, also using a lot of that equipment and a lot of that steel to build out additional capacity within Giga Texas itself to support those new vehicles and that robo taxi that we heard about. Now this morning I flew early and I got some views inside parts of the factory and a couple of these pictures that I will show you are really important because you can see how they are adding additional floors, additional mezzanines and just basically additional capacity to have those production uh, uh, goals set and met here at Giga Texas. So all of this is going on and with what I can show you, it uh, kind of helps give that insight of what we can expect. Now, another thing that they did talk about is the Cortex supercomputer cluster on the south end of Giga Texas. Now, I showed you recently that the fan units on the uh, cooling tower are operational, and here's another video of that this morning, but that is because they are already using 29,000 H100 NVIDIA GPUs in their cluster here at Giga Texas. So it's already operational. And by the end of this year, or actually the end of this month, October, they want to have 50,000 of them operational. And that's why we see that cooling tower and plant uh, starting to be uh, tested and uh, getting operational because they're going to need that to run that supercomputer cluster. And, uh, you know, another great piece of information that is related to Giga Texas and also for Tesla overall is that they have just produced their 7 millionth vehicle. And a lot of those have come right here at Giga Texas, along with the Fremont, Giga Shanghai and Giga Berlin factories, which is outstanding. And of course, their mega pack and energy production is also ramping up significantly and it's becoming a very large part of the bottom line uh, for the finances uh, here at Giga Texas and also for uh, Tesla itself. So that is also really great news. Now there's a lot of other uh, items that uh, if you go back and listen to that third quarter results meeting you'll hear about, but I thought I would at least highlight some of those here and give you a few images uh, this morning. Uh, so you can get an idea of what's going on inside the uh, factory. So anyway, uh, there's a lot more to see. We'll go ahead and get into the drone. We'll do some early morning flights and take a look inside the Giga Texas. And then we'll take a look around the entire site as well 
and uh, just get a good uh, feel for where we are on the last Friday of October here at Giga Texas. As always, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Good early morning from the south side of Giga, Texas. Nice look across the factory over towards downtown Austin. And I thought I would take this opportunity in the early hours to give you some views inside the factory to go along with what we heard at the financial results meeting on Wednesday, particularly with the production of the uh, lower cost vehicles and the robo taxi that will be uh, taking place in uh, 2025. So for that to happen, they have to be installing uh, much of the equipment to be able to do that production. And as you'll see, that is well underway. Uh, some of it is visible through the windows. A lot of it is hidden behind the interior walls, but I'll do my best to show you what is uh, going on. From the south side, this view is wonderful. We can also tell that the framework for most of the glass on the south end and the two angled corners is completed. And this is what it looks like uh, as you see the factory early in the morning lit from inside. Also a great view here of the fork at this intersection and additional work that is going on on the berm next to the cyber pond. I'm gonna fly over to the southeast corner and as I do that, take a look at this south end with the three tunnels and the three level terracing and how it appears. And let's take a look at the cooling plant and then we'll come back and take a closer look inside the windows. Now work on the cooling plant continues. Five of the six riser pipes have now been installed and the sixth one is being assembled on the ground and getting ready for it to be uh, finalized as well. Some of the main connections appear to still not be finished, so they are continuing to test out that cooling system. Inside here, in the middle of the screen where the walls are coming together is part of the cooling system. You can see those red and silver um, heat exchangers. Also see some of the yellow membrane on this ramp and the Cortex supercomputer cluster interior structure on that ground floor. As I wrap around the building here and go to the south end, uh, the lighting is good enough for us to get some idea of what it looks like inside. As you can tell, there's a large foyer of about uh, three column widths uh, until we get to that interior wall. Some of that is the uh, mechanical rooms and pipes that support the cooling system and some of it is additional interior space. On the ground floor, that interior wall is again where all of the supercomputer cluster is installed all along the entire width of the building. And of course, there is another three column width uh, open foyer by the glass. And it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing with all of this uh, extra space on the south end. A lot more equipment and materials are still inside waiting for installation. And of course, uh, we know in that center part, there's several different layers and mezzanines that are being filled in as well. The glass installation continues here on the west side. As I wrap around the corner, it's very evident how much of the glass has been installed up to this point. They are also doing some uh, form work and rebar to finish up the perimeter grade beam in this location. Of course, this is where the boring tunnel came through underneath the ground here and in those interior angled walls that is where the boring tunnel exits as we continue to fly past this uh, exit or entry point on the ground for new vehicles and this location where the cyber trucks exit the factory i'm going to get a close view here zoom in 
and we'll fly along the west side of General Assembly and just take a look at some of the activity and changes. On the top floor is where a lot of the Cybertruck equipment uh, or parts for the vehicle are made. That would be the doors uh, particularly. Also, some of the uh, fenders and the front trunk and tailgate. And a lot of that work is uh, underway throughout this area. That's also where the laser welding for the doors takes place. On the second floor, this is somewhat storage, but it's also being built out to uh, have additional production. There's some robots that are very visible next to the windows. Those are relatively newly installed. And uh, through the entire back area is where we'll see more of the Cybertruck uh, production underway. Of course, that's on the third floor, but uh, the assembly is on the first floor, and they use quite a bit of the vertical part of the factory. As we continue to fly along towards the north, this is uh, continued great views of the production facility that is on that third floor, and I believe the second floor is being reconfigured as well. Now, as the glass gets wider, we have a better view into that third floor, uh, some of the uh, equipment and the robots that you see are assembling the basic shell body of the Cybertruck. Also, they do some of the structural packs for the Cybertrucks in that area as well. I'll bring the drone up for a slightly better view. And this is giving you a look at some of the new construction, adding floors and mezzanines into this part of the factory. I'm going to zoom out uh, because... Uh, there's flagpoles to my left, and also I just want to give you an overall view. All along that third floor is a complete new floor that's being installed that will cause this to have four floors in this location. And of course, the open section on the bottom is where offices and uh, people are uh, greeted when they arrive. Also, events are taking place in there. Looks like they have a nice selection of vehicles on the ground in there as well. More look at the mezzanine and the next or the second floor on or the fourth floor, I guess it'd be the second floor on the second uh, level of the building. And that extends all the way through this section. There is an interior wall in uh, the back about uh, five column widths behind there. And behind that wall is additional production that is being added for the factory. I'm going to bring the drone up a little higher altitude. And we'll fly around the flagpoles and get ready to go onto the west side of the highway. But with the nice sunrise, the breeze with the flags and the attempt to look inside for at least some of the factory, I hope that that helped put into context some of what we heard at that uh, financial results meeting on Wednesday and why it's so exciting to know that uh, the production of those new vehicles and the robotaxis is coming up very quickly. Beautiful view of downtown Austin glowing in the early morning sunrise. And of course, here over the dirt section is where they've finished up the installation of that natural gas pipeline that extends along the entire length of the east side of the outbound lot area. Now, the end of line facility is busy. There are cyber trucks lining up for processing. And in the north part of the outbound lot, there are a lot of cyber trucks that are waiting for their turn to go through processing and then be queued up for transport to trucks. Now, I am hearing that a lot of the employees are working overtime on Fridays now. I think that's related to Cybertruck, the shift from the down found, the foundation to non-foundation, and just also just trying to keep ahead of all of the production for the Cybertrucks. As far as the model wise, those are continuing to be produced, but I think that uh, with the uh, reconfiguration of some of the product lines and getting ready for uh, next year's production of new vehicles that uh, is uh, taking somewhat of its toll for the numbers that we see here right now. But a great look at all these cyber trucks as we fly low over this part of the lot. More of them on the left hand side of the screen and then on the right uh, model wise and cyber trucks kind of interspersed together with the transport trucks, trucks getting ready to pick them up. Now, I mentioned in the intro that I look at a lot of the equipment that is stored nearby to get a feel for what they are doing on the inside. Of course, this is mostly spools of cable, a lot of transformers. There's about 84 of them here, at least at the last count. There may be some more if you can 
do the count. Let me know in the comments if I am incorrect. We also see these uh, white items with some blue and black tarps. That's for the data center. And this section next to the clearing on the left-hand side of the screen is more of this equipment that has been stored here for quite some time, but has recently started to be unpacked. And I believe that this is uh, production equipment related to most likely the RoboTaxi. And uh, again, I'm not 100% sure what these parts are. Uh, as I zoom in, this gives you a great view of some of the equipment. Now, the ones that are not unpacked on the bottom left of the screen are very similar, at least in shape and design of what we are seeing here. And as I continue to maneuver around, this gives you a great view of what these look like. Now, there are hooks on the top, and that suggests that they are going to be picked up and positioned by bridge cranes inside. On the ground, these flat items look to me like they may be uh, kind of jigs that are used for uh, positioning and placing bodies as they are being produced. Of course, I may be incorrect on that. And if there are experts in my viewers or Patreons that know what these are for sure, please let me know in the comments so that I can get that uh, correct and let everybody know. But I zoom back out and you can get a good view of all of that equipment that is sitting here getting ready for being unpacked. And of course, the blue pipes on the right and pumps are what they've been using to clean out the cooling system for that supercomputer cluster. Uh, on the uh, southeast side of the factory. Now we do see more crates that have been delivered here. I'll zoom in. They have all of these markings, a GE with some sort of number, and then T4, T7, T9. And I believe that this says uh, markings to show where these are assembled and in what order. But as far as what is exactly in these uh, crates, I am not sure. I could not get close enough to read the labels. And then, of course, these silver-wrapped items were delivered about a week ago, and these are all being lined up as well. And I do believe that all of this is related for production, and we should start seeing this moved into the factory pretty soon, and then we can maybe get an idea of what part of the factory that's being assembled into. The dirt clearing on this far southwest side uh, continues to have some work with uh, this depression on the right looks like they are uh, excavating more dirt from here. And uh, then on the side next to the pond, it looks like there's some additional excavation work. I'm not sure what the plan is for this area. It used to be hills and ponds. Most of the hills have been removed. Just this one pond is remaining. And they've been using a lot of the dirt around the site for dirt fill. So we'll continue to monitor that. Now, this particular material staging yard is very interesting because on the left, we see a lot of the steel items that were stored here, many of which now have been moved inside, most likely for those extra floors and mezzanines that we saw. Also, this is another group of, I think it's 72 transformers. And uh, as I mentioned in the past, the manufacturer and the specifications for these suggest uh, some sort of battery storage or solar panel use. Of course, more of the steel corrugated pipe and some other steel items are stored here for that interior construction of the uh, floors and other parts of the uh, factory. Now, I've had people ask how much of the factory is still empty. It's hard to say for sure, but I would put the number at somewhere between 20 and 30 percent still available for additional production space. And I think that is what we are seeing being used right now to build out for next year. Great view of the south part of Giga Texas across the highway. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to bring the drone back down. Take a look at the road surface panels for the boring company. And what you see here is uh, crews inspecting a number of new panels that have arrived. They all have markings, some in red, some in um, green, but they all say OK. So these are all new uh, these road surface panels to replace the original ones that were in the tunnel, but they had some cracking issues. Those have all been removed, and now they are replacing all of those road surface panels. I did have a viewer ask how many times have those panels been replaced? Only once, and this is the completion of that work. Now, all of the dirt here is covering over the natural gas pipeline that uh, appears to be completed. As I zoom in, this is some great views of this entrance of the tunnel, the conduit work that is underway uh, next to the uh, tunnel on the left. And then this section that has had uh, what looks to be eight deep piles, or at least uh, piles that are several meters deep in a square pattern. And uh, I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, but I think it's associated with... Uh, 
the tunnel and it'll be something that I continue to monitor over time. A look into the tunnel shows that the road surface panels have not reached all the way to this end yet and they're continuing to replace them uh, from the uh, east side through the length of the tunnel over to the uh, west side. Here's an overall view of the tunnel and where it is in relation to the south end of the factory. Of course, the other end of the tunnel is in the middle of the extension and that is getting ready for operation as well. And the cyber trucks predominantly, but also model wise, will be able to use that to cross under the highway over to the outbound lot. As I continue to fly to the north, I'll turn the drone back to give you a good look at the end of line facility here on the south side. Of course, that outbound lot with all of the cyber trucks. And uh, as I pivot back to the north, uh, we're going to continue to follow along the path on the ground where the natural gas pipeline was installed. As you can tell, almost all of it has now been filled back in and that work, at least in this part of that pipeline, is completed. As we cross over the material staging with the two tents, it looks like it has been cleaned up to some degree to me based on what I've seen over the last couple of weeks. So that'll be interesting to monitor while that continues to change. This workshop and the selection of materials plus the Evapco fan units and base uh, units uh, continues to wait for their turn to be installed. Uh, again, this is one of those things I'm monitoring to figure out where it's going to be installed so we can figure out what the purpose of that equipment is. More of the steel stored just north of the uh, Evapco units and that we see that a lot of that is actually clearing out too. So that's being used for those internal uh, walls and the floors that we mentioned earlier. As I turn back to the west, I did want to show you that the newly paved section of Tesla Road on the east, the west side has already got the markings now, and this is how it appears. It is four lanes all the way across now, unlike it was originally just two, and then it has that Y kind of split, and it goes around those uh, medians where you see that tree. This is the terminal for that natural gas pipeline that uh, we've been watching all along the side of the uh, highway from here to the Colorado River. This is what the manifold system looks like. The gravel is now being placed as I suspected and more work on the north for more of the pipes. So we'll continue to monitor this and again this is related to the energy plant not necessarily Giga Texas. As we cross over the highway this is a great look back to the south towards the factory over the Megapack site and here to the electrical switch yard and there is a few uh, interesting developments here today that I do want to show you. The first of which is that that uh, concrete slab that we saw being constructed in the middle of the screen now has one of those V-type uh, circuit breakers being installed. This one appears to be slightly larger than the other ones that are already uh, installed, as you can tell. That could be because of some covers that are on the uh, insulators on the top. Uh, or it uh, could actually be bigger. But uh, this is part of the equipment that is necessary to uh, be able to power the third transformer. And that will be sitting on this large pad with the catch basin and the grates around it. The protecting wall that will go between the two transformers is still waiting for installation. So let's get back over to the main factory and let's take a look at what's going on on the north end today. <music> This large lot was a reconfigured parking lot. Now it is the management and storage facility, at least temporarily, for the trimmed and untrimmed castings. And if you looked at my last video, this was full of castings today, mostly empty. That gives you an indication of the number of production, specifically of Cybertrucks, that has been going on in the factory, although some of it is also model-wise. Here's a good look at uh, some of those white bins that are used to catch the trimmed biscuits that is the excess of the aluminum from the casting process and of course more of the bins and rack mounts with castings it's more of the cable installation is going on with those excavations as well and of course the markings along the berm on the left are for more castings and you can see that they're using rack mounts and castings throughout that area the steel enclosure over the receiving doors is continuing to get its roof and some of the wall decking. We get a good look at that blast wall in the middle bottom of the screen. 
and uh, that will eventually be completely covered by this uh, roof and uh, steel structure. Uh, this is the bag house filtration plant. A good look at the pipes and how that's continuing to be installed. In addition to that, those uh, kind of box-like structures on this uh, high-rise. And it looks like at least part of a walkway has been installed now as we take a look down into the structure. More of the pipes and some of the strainers or separators going into the filters have been installed and it looks like more are ready for installation. And then over on that west side material staging, we were able to see some of the pipes that are being used here and they are lined. I don't know if it's ceramic, but uh, they definitely have linings that are not metallic on the inside of those large pipes. This is a great overall view of that entire uh, assembly and structure that is going on the east side of casting. Now I did notice that there is a new structure being added to, to the roof here. I'll come down and we'll zoom in and take a look. I think this may be a staircase but uh, or an access point for the roof, but uh, uh, we can uh, just continue to monitor this and try to figure out for sure as it develops. But as you can see, there's a box-like structure and then kind of a triangular structure on the east side of that. And of course, that's obviously new and uh, we'll see what that uh, purpose is as it continues to be constructed. The receiving doors with the new concrete apron that all appears completed with the exception of the enclosures around those receiving doors that still need some work and some castings being stored on the dirt. So I'm going to pull away and we'll take a look at uh, the testing and calibration lot, the old one. There are some cyber trucks. The vehicles on the right are employee uh, uh, vehicles being uh, used for that uh, charging, which is available to the employees. And of course, that center uh, material staging yard with some of the pipes is what's being used on the south end of the building for that cooling system. On the left, that... Uh, a section that looks like asphalt with water on it. That's the recycling yard and it looks like it's very busy today and of course the East Warehouse on Wheels in the middle of the screen and how it appears today. I'll be honest one of the things I've been looking for here is some Tesla semis. There is a report that a number of them are on their way to Texas from California and I'm presuming that they're going to be here at Giga Texas at some point. So I'll continue to keep an eye out for that as well. To round out the video, we'll spend just a few moments here on the east side of the cathode building and where that crash test facility is located. Great view of some of the vehicles uh, inside that perimeter fence and uh, some other work that is underway to do crash testing at that facility. As we round the north end of the cathode building and take a look at that uh, smaller structure, which is the cell test lab, I think this will be a great point to end the video. The sun is now coming out, so the entire site is well lit. So I'll bring the drone at a higher altitude, give you a great overall view of the entire Giga Texas site with the downtown Austin in the upper right. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your support. I hope you have a great weekend.